Okay, so node means the wave function psi equals zero. That's one definition of a node. Uh, so for two dimensions, what you would do is where it crosses the x-axis. Anywhere it crosses the x-axis, that would be a node. So for example, here, this would be a node. And you could also count these as nodes too, but when we're doing this uh, particle in the box, we really are counting the ones on the inside, the internal nodes. Okay. okay. But if you want to count these two, then you just add two to whatever's in the middle. Okay. All right. And then there's, uh, when you get to three dimensions, it gets a little more complicated, but the same definition still holds the wave function equals zero. So what does that mean? Well, there's no real x-axis is the problem. So that's where r is zero. That's the most common you'd use when you're doing problems. When r equals zero. Or uh, maybe I should say more specifically when the radial wave function equals zero. What way? The radial wave function. So psi in 3D okay. is equal to r times y. r is called the radial part of the wave function. Okay because psi has three variables, r, theta, and phi. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Mathematically, r and phi and theta can be separated. Mm -hmm. So that means what we do, we just call it another name, another function. The function holding the r, we call r. And that's the one holding the, the r. So that can be mathematically factored out. And then the y part uh, is holding the angles. So ones with the r, they're usually going to be, it looks like an r or r squared or uh, e to the minus r power, something like that. These, this part of the wave function looks like sine theta, cosine theta, sine phi, cosine phi, stuff like that. So they can be mathematically separated because you separate a sine from a r. So here you can say when r, capital R, the radial part of the wave function equals zero, when this equals zero, or when this equals zero. Most often, that's a zero. Most often, it's, you're going to use this in problems, this top one. Yeah, and we'll, we can do a problem if you want, but uh, that's the setup. Yeah? What's the significance of psi when it's not equal to zero? Is it like the amp amplitude? What is psi when it's not equal to zero? What's the significance of psi? The significance of psi when psi is not equal to zero, or when it's equal to zero, it doesn't matter. It is the, the function of the wave. So essentially, if you would graph the wave that an electron is traveling on, like this would be a sine function, well, 3D, same thing, is just more complex. Uh, so this uh, so is the f of x, or the psi of x, that function. When you square it, then it becomes a probability, so it's a little bit more of a palatable uh, expression. But uh, aside from it being squared, there's not much else you can say besides it's the wave function. Okay, so the node. So these are the ways mathematically you'd find the node. Another way you would define the node is where there is uh, no probability of finding an electron. So today in class we talked about the p orbital. The p orbital is the one that looks like the dumbbell. So P orbital, let's say a 2P, will look like this. Okay, it looks like a dumbbell. The lobes on either side. Well, right here, that's a node. These, this lobe, this kind of cloud, represents where the electron might be. Just swirling, folks, swirling in here. Uh, 
or it might be down here. But it's not there. And that's called a node. So where you have a zero probability of finding an electron. So that's more of the definition if you want. And this is more of the math. Is that alright? Okay, yeah. Okay, good.